nerd is the new sexy. Mm. Hello, nerds. I am Wildfire One. You're listening and watching Nerds New Sexy Entertainment. And with me today is Gambit. What's up, y'all? So, Gambit, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, today we're talking about uh, MM, MMORPGs, massive multiplayer online role-playing games. Which I, we don't think we have Damn, to say. I don't think words. we have to say massive multiplayer online role-playing games anymore because if you're playing massively multiplayer, chances are it's going to be online. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, do we really need the online part of that? It's just like, like we all know it's got to be online unless you got like. Like maybe I'm like back like in the old days when you like we would like Couch bring over like twenty friends with computers and play oh, land parties and land shit. Parties. Yeah, yeah, that's that, different. That was a thing. But like for the for the most part now, if you're playing with friends online, you're an antisocial fuck stick who like has to stay at home to do it. You know. Yeah, well, especially with those MMORPG games. So yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so, why they've I mean, been shortened. I guess to MMORPG. Yeah, like and I'm not a, I'm not a huge you know admittedly I'm not like the hugest biggest fan of them. You know, no, I'm not. Um, I do love either. one. I love one MMORPG, just one, and I've tried a bunch. Um, you know, I just, I just can't get into them, and I don't get into that in a minute. You know, it's just not, but there's just not my fucking cup of tea, man. Like, I well, just don't. Some of them like are them. good, but it, it, there's a point where all of them were pretty much the same. But uh, there was something you wanted to touch base on. I guess we can do that before we start this and start the actual topic yeah so okay so a little bit of, of nerd news that's coming down the 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 pipes that i want to both defend and talk about because it's been on my mind recently a lot um so they are halting production on all further star wars movies disney is for multiple reasons and some good some bad but the reasons are there and I gotta say, I'm yeah. I'm not that disappointed about this. I'm actually kind of glad they're halting uh, movies on Star Wars. Uh, so basically, what happened uh, for those of you who are not following is the last couple of Star Wars movies, independent movies, have flopped hard. Uh, Solo being the biggest one. Uh, Solo flopped pretty bad, actually. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of reports of people going out and seeing it. Well, Rogue One did okay. Rogue One did great. Rogue One did amazing. You know, and I like Rogue One a lot. I think a lot of people like Rogue One. It's a combination of things. It's like with with number eight was a was a terrible piece of crap, like universally hated. Uh, Solo was garbage. Uh, even even number seven was kind of on the fence there for a while. Even I even said on the podcast like I'm gonna reserve my judgment on hating these new movies until number eight comes out. And number eight came out, and I was like, well, <laughs> like that's how I feel. And it's there's multiple reasons why. And that's why I say, like, I, I can honestly defend the fans here because, you know, I felt it too. Like, so well, what's what's the what, explain all of the issues why Disney is is putting a stop to their their yeah. So the number one reason is that the fans themselves are just blasting the ever loving fuck out of these movies. They are and then they're trolling the actresses, the actors. Everybody involved in it. As a matter of fact, they bullied... I don't even know the actress's name because she's a piece of shit and I don't like her anyway. To some degree, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, she's a piece of shit and she, need, and she needs to know she's a piece of shit. Like, look, I'm a piece of shit, but I know I'm a piece of shit. Fans need to tell you you're a piece of shit to know you're a piece of shit. <laughs> like, no, no. So I don't know the actress's name, but she experienced the most of it. The, guy, the chick that plays Ray. In the new movies. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, I don't... So, I didn't... I, is she like a piece of shit person? No, she's a piece of shit actress. Oh, okay. Well, she's not I'm a piece sure of shit person. Woman. I'm sure she's a. I'm sure she's a fantastic woman. I'm. I. I see that. See, I don't. That's why I hate. I hate defending anybody because, like, I don't know. Like, I know them on screen. That's all I'm judging them for. You could be on like screen. You could be like, how dare you fuck with Mark Hamill? But you, you can fuck all you want with that Ray chick. That's fine. Fuck her. Well, no, it's not. No, it's not even that. I, like, I don't know Mark Hamill. Like, I know everybody based on the characters they play and the characters they portray. And I think everybody's like this. I think what we do is that we fall in love or we fall in hate with the character they play and their performance on screen and therefore bully them or ridicule them or praise them off of that. Now, the thing about that is that's both good and bad because here's the thing. I take a very sideways stance on it because I don't want to like defend her and be like, I'm sure she's a lovely woman. She could be choking cats in her basement for all I know. <laughs> I don't know. You can't defend not... her as a person because you don't know her. 
I don't know her. I don't know. I don't know if she she and like and there's and there's really no stories of her. Like sometimes there's 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 um there's sports athletes or there's actors and you hear these stories that they're like mean to their fans or they're like they're stuck up or they're yeah. pieces of shit. You know, or you hear these like stories, like like the famous Batman one where um, Christian Bale was like yelling at that lighting producer. Remember that when that when that mm. came on online, like so sometimes you you hear videos of these these actors being just terrible people, and you're like, okay, maybe he's kind of a douchebag, you know. But this girl, like I, like I said, I don't know her personally. I, I'm gonna make that well, perfectly clear. Let me put it. Let me let me stop you right there and say it's not right that they're bullying her. It's not right that they're bullying her uh, personally. You can, I mean, if you have an opinion about, like, say, my acting, I'll go out there and I'm a shitty actor, that's great. Talk about my acting. But if they're out there going, you're a sh- piece of shit, you're a horrible person, they don't, we don't know that. We can't. Yeah, it's, yeah okay, it's yes. not. It's not right to go out and disrupt someone's life, and that's when I, when I hear bullying, that's what I think. It's one thing putting your your, your thoughts and ideas on the internet going, yeah, the, per- the chick who played Ray, fuck, fuck that person. Like, Caden Christensen, fuck that guy. For the rest of my life, fuck that guy. <laughs> you know, I don't know him personally, but fuck that guy as an actor. Because, yeah. honestly, in my opinion, he killed Star Wars. In, to an extent. He was part of what killed Star Wars. The prequels, yeah. at least. Um, but but then that's my point. But that's where it stops. Do I hate him personally? No. You know, I don't yeah, do hate I want, him personally. Do I, want anything, do I want anything bad to happen to the chick that plays Ray? No. Do okay. I want any fans? Do I want any fans causing violence? No. no, I want her to live a long. I want her to live a long, happy life. Prove us wrong. Every, what's that? Have her prove us wrong. I want to yeah. see her prove us wrong. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. Her, I want to see her pull off a good performance. But I agree. She's practice. not as an actress. Not so. Not so powerful. Not so. She's not strong in the acting force. She's not. She's not. And she's had two films so far. I gave her a chance for the first one. I was like, okay, you know, we're getting to know her. I even said on the podcast, like, okay, we're still getting to know the characters. Let's see how they develop. We're in the second one now, and she was terrible. She was fucking awful. Her, her well, performance was the writing bad. didn't help either. The writing for yeah, the, that's for true. The movie. That is that is that is true. The writing is, and and, and that goes with the director. Look, and let's and that let's goes, and, if you want, let's go even into more in depth because let's be honest. When Mark Hamill first started doing the movies, he wasn't really that well of a known actor either. And he really and let's look look back on it. You know, as an adult. Despite the nostalgia, despite all that stuff, Mark Hamill didn't really act too well in those first two movies. <coughs> not really, not especially. I mean, we love to make fun of him for, but I was gonna go to the Taji station and pick up some power converters. Like the the lines weren't delivered well. No, they weren't. But he grew into it. He developed it. And Mark Hamill now is an actor. We all can agree. I think every fan can agree that he plays the best Joker of all time. Well, he's he's a damn good actor now. But he. But he 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 kind of grew into those shoes, and the gal who plays Ray, maybe the same thing will happen. But the thing is, is that my initial whole point of this is what made Star Wars great was the story, not the acting, not not That's true. you know, because the act a lot of the acting the first movie they didn't even know it was going to get big, you know they a lot of the acting really wasn't all that good, and and then you know and I'm probably going to get there's probably going to be like a fucking box at my door tomorrow for saying that. But let's face it, Star Wars, the first the, the first two movies, the acting wasn't really all that amazing. It was the story that pushed it through. And then yeah. we, we look back on that with a nostalgic point of view because of the story. Because of all that. I love Star Wars. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I would defend Star Wars to this day. That My point is, is people go out of their way to like go into like fist fight arguments about this shit. And that's and that's kind of what you were mentioning with the fans, with the new movies. And the new movies, again, this is what I'm getting to. The new movies, the storylines are shit. And that's why the, the acting, we're, we're pointing all this stuff out. First, The first three movies, we go like, oh, at least we got a good storyline. You know, and this one, we don't even got that. We got Ray fucking acting bland. You got, you got uh, Finn, who's kind of cool. And then you got, you don't got anyone that's really cool. Everyone that was really cool passed away. Yeah, and well, even though like I've defended, I, like I am a defender of, of Star Wars, Episode One, The Phantom Menace, all day because at least if nothing else, that's it where gave we us, disagree. But that's okay. I, fuck off. It get, no, it gave us, it gave us, if it, it, it gave us, Qui- it gave us Qui Gon Jinn for the win, and it gave us Darth Maul. It gave us both those characters for five minutes, and that was worth it to me. No. So the fans have been really upset by everything, and they've been very vocal about how much they've been very upset. 
what's been been said and the mudslinging that's been happening is now this is where I cannot hold my tongue. The director of Star Wars Episode Eight, Ryan Johnson, is a piece of shit. If anybody deserves to get punched in the dick, it's this guy. I'm not, I'm not saying that anybody should punch him in the face. We don't call for violence. No, so this is this is where the big drama. This is where the drama really comes out. A lot of the fans are upset with the movie. Some take it to a, a, a very extreme level. Some don't. Whatever, whatever, whatever. This, but what I am saying is that Ryan Johnson, this director, comes out. If you listen, it, this movie's been out for damn near nine months, almost a year. Mm. And Ryan Johnson, this director, is still blaming the fans for it failing. He's calling them sexist, misogynistic, racist, homophobic, all these, all the, all these buzzwords to throw out the fact that his directing and his story and his writing was fucking terrible. We don't, like, this is what drives me crazy with Star Wars. Like, this director calls the fans sexist, right? It's a big one. Because we obviously hated episode eight because there's a blue-haired chick leading the Republic, and that's one of the fan complaints is, is that girl that read, let, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. So the blue-haired chick that led the Republic, everybody's like, they don't want to see a strong woman in the lead. Why? No, no, no. We're Star Wars fans. We love Princess Leia. Princess Leia was the ultimate woman. She had a backstory. She led the Republic. They at least talked about her a little bit. They at least explained her a little bit. And then on top of that, her big part of the backstory was what? She was Luke's sister. So, but, uh. so, and then, and then, and then they're like, well, they don't like Rey because, again, sexist guys don't like Rey being a lead character. They want Luke to be the lead character. It's like, no, we're cool with the lead character. Just not a dry piece of toast. You give us a dry, like, and again, you said it earlier, it's not like Mark Hamill was the greatest actor ever, but there was compelling story. His aunt and uncle, his aunt and uncle got murdered by stormtroopers. Why? He found these droids. Why? It had more depth to it, you know. Like he had a story. Like he wanted to join the Republic. He followed around a space hobo. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That too. You know. It was all. <laughs> but it was all. It was all plot device. In this one, the plot device is just you know. And the plot device in that in the first movies were was explained. You know, this is this happened because of this, this, and this. This one in these movies, it's like this happened because we said it happened. You know, right. oh, this 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 chick is this chick is uh, the leader of of the resistance for what reason? I don't know. Well, who is she? I don't know. Oh, there's here's a little backstory. Her and Leia are friends. Well, how'd they become friends? I don't know. And there's a, there's just too much of that that I don't know shit as opposed to actual storyline. And I think that's where it, it, we lose the fans. Now that doesn't make us toxic. That just makes us pissed off because you had a great concept and you dropped the ball. I, I'm not going to get political, but I, I will say this is the greatest meme I ever saw about Star Wars. And that is um, a fan, a super fan, put on his website and it was just, uh, can we please leave politics out of Star Wars? It's fucking about space wizards. Like, Don't put real life thing? issues in, in Star Wars. Don't. Just don't. Right. Just Stop don't. Stop injecting... The thing about Star Wars, and I've said, this, I've said this a million times, I've said this a million times, and this is the one thing I'll say about Star Wars when it comes to politics. Star Wars has always been beautiful because it had no our politics, as in the Earth politics. They had their own politics, their 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 galaxies, and it was a galaxy far, far away. You know, it had nothing to do with America, Earth, what was going on in our world, and I like that. But here's the thing. Everybody's always debated what's better, Star Trek or Star Wars. And I've always said, well, I've always said both. Because when I want a story about fucking space wizards with no serious topics, I go to Star Wars. When I want my politically heavy-handed moral stories, I go to Star Trek. Well, Star Wars, I, I agree with you, but Star Wars is more like a, a Star Wars is more like a like a, a blatant good versus evil, right? Yes. It's in your face, good versus evil. This is bad, this is good, this is easy to follow, go with it. In Star Trek is more like Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> right. You know, without the sex and the, the, the beatings and all that stuff. But you get my point. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Star Trek. There's more than just good and evil. There's like Fifty Shades of, of, of Between, you know, th thousands of shades between. And, and you just what you do is you choose the lesser evil in Star Trek. And this is where I defend the fans. I fully agree... Leave the politics out of Star Wars. It, it just It's just not what we want. It's not what we want out of Star Wars. It's not. I miss the days when I could just be like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think Ray was a good actress. You're a sexist! It's like, I like Leia. I like I like Leia. Well, I so mean, even, even the Marvel Universe, that happened for a little bit. 
So yeah, so it's it's just one of those things that's happening. So it, it, all this, so it's nice. It's, it's like I, I can say this. It's a nice stew of shit. He they got rid of the what the producer, not the producer, but the director of the guy who did um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Have you heard about that? No. Just because some shit he tweeted years ago. Well, oh. Honestly, if that's the case, why don't they get rid of this guy? Because he's a fucking idiot, and he's he's just making shit. He's giving Disney a bad name by arguing with his fan, with the fans. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that's the thing. Is, look, look, if a fan says, I don't like the movie, don't then insult the fans and say, well, you don't like the movie because you're sexist. It's yeah. like, dude, you're, you're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. I, I'm saying I'm saying the storyline fell flat. Well, it wouldn't fall flat if you weren't a sexist. It's I'm like, giving, we're I'm giving you... We're giving you our point of view is what we're doing. We're not doing it because, like, oh, yeah, the, I'm not, I personally, it's, I don't give a shit. I'd love, I li- love the idea of a female, like, a female hero in the in, in the next series, but just how you did it. It's just how you did it. It was, I don't care, like, it was look, boring. Look, I played, like, like talking about, talking about uh, female or male heroes, I played video games, right? So my top my top three favorite video games obviously N Seven which I played a female Shepard Horizon Zero Dawn was an amazing fucking game and you played a female hero but it's a perfect shit stew of what's going on you add the bad writing you add the bad characters you add dry stories you add a bad storyline then you inject a shit ton of politics that nobody wants and it makes a perfect shit stew of a bad movie oh, that's very, what's happening in a very in a very angry uh, director who can't take critique. Right. You add all that together and it makes a perfect shitstorm. Now, is Disney right for canceling all future movies? Here's the thing. I said, I, no, well, no, I said this on a previous podcast. I said, you know what I'm scared about Disney taking over Star Wars? I'm afraid they're going to they're going to overload us with shit, you know? Here's Whoa. a movie. Here's a movie. Here's a movie. Here's a movie. Here's we knew, a movie. we knew that was happening cuz Disney takes yeah. something. We've talked about this. Disney takes something and they just they they like a sponge. They wring it as much as they can. Until they can get all the money out of it, they're doing it with they're doing it with the Marvel universe. They're doing it with the Star Wars universe. Now they're doing it with these. I mean, honestly, if you think about it, it's ingenious. They're making these fucking cartoons into movies. Oh yeah, yeah. you know, we had a podcast on that too, and we and the sad thing is we predicted most of the movies that were coming out. You know, go back and listen, guys. That, that we did. We we actually predicted a lot of the movies that we're gonna that were that are they're working on. Um, yep, we did. We did, and we saw it coming, and that's and that's the thing. So not only do we see what Disney was going to do, but we saw the backlash coming, and I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. So am I happy that they're canceling? Or at, per, right now, the, the the news press is we are postponing movies. Um, am I happy about this? Not really. I definitely want to see nine come out. Please don't postpone nine because look, as much as I hate seven and eight, I'm kind of I'm kind of invested in it to see if they can save it. You know, because maybe. Nine comes out and it makes up for everything. You got to admit, J.J. Abrams gave a huge setup, a great setup at the end of the uh, of episode seven. Ryan Johnson took the ball from J.J. Abrams and just went, eh. I agree. Agree. He literally. He could have made. He could have made. You could have made Ray someone's daughter. It didn't even have to be. It didn't even have. She didn't have to be a Skywalker. She could have been like. Uh, maybe like I would even I'd be happy if she was like a third sister or a, th- a third I sibling. Think, I still think they're going. I, st- I still think they're going to go for the the gotcha. They're going to go like you're nobody, you're nothing. Your parents were drunks and alcoholic and garbage people, and then they're going to go. Just kidding, he lied to you. Ha ha ha. You're strong in the force, and you're somebody's family. And it's like yeah. got you fans. You were all predicting something, and then nah, and then ah. But that's like, what. Nah, but that's that. what that. this guy, the, the director of Eight, was trying to do. He was like, "Oh, these guys are all expecting that. I'm just going to surprise them by giving them nothing," and that was not what we wanted. We wanted something good, and you just gave us bullshit. And then you fucked up the Star Wars franchise by going, "Oh, you know, uh, she was born because." She wasn't even strong in the Force born that way. She was just made strong in the Force because balance. No. No. Bad Disney. <laughs> Stop that. Stop saying metachlorians. No. Yeah, don't fuck up space magic. Don't <laughs> fuck up space magic. So I, it's, 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 a, it's a very interesting time to be a fan right now. And it's like, dude, I am entitled to love or hate a movie based on its own merit. I am. 
I am. There's we're, nothing else to it. We're fans. We either like or hate it. And and what this guy needs to remember, what and this is this is the final the final verdict on this. This what this guy needs to remember, Gambit, is that we're the ones paying his paycheck. The people going to see the movies. The people, the fan, the, we're the ones that make this good. We're the ones that makes it. And Disney, I think, understands that. Disney is a business company. They know. And honestly, that's why I'm I'm surprised they didn't just pff, get, get rid of this guy. We're done with him. He's fucking up. And I, I honestly, I think that's why he's not directing the next movie. Because yeah, I don't think he I agree. is. So, yeah, so moving on to the regular topic. So, MMO RPGs. So, like, I guess the biggest one, it, the biggest one, well, obviously. Let's, let's name a few off. Well, you got you got you got WoW, World of Warcraft, um, Lineage. That's the one I was thinking. Lineage, Lineage. Lineage. You've got uh, Star Wars: Old Republic. Um, you've got um, uh, Elder Scrolls Online. There's a big one right now. DC. What's that? The uh, DC Universe Online. DC Universe Online, which I haven't played that one. There's Madanogi, um, which is a free one on Steam. Which really? Is, yeah, it's very fun. It's, it's very right. grindy, but it's fun. So, the th- here's the thing. I'm going to start off with what I don't like about them, because, like, that's easier for there's, me. There's I, a lot to not like about MMORPGs. Well, oh, here's the thing, Final th- Fantasy, what, 13 or 12, or whichever the online version of Final Fantasy was? My biggest gripe, my number one gripe with MMORPGs is this. When I play a game like Mass Effect or Horizon Zero Dawn, an actual RPG... When I make a choice and something changes in the game, it changes forever. Whereas MMORPGs, it's like, hey, go over here and count the, the hairs on the giant's ass and bring me three of them back, and then you bring the, the hairs back. Nothing in the world changes, you know what I'm saying? Because somebody else has to do that quest. Well, so there that are, quest is there are there. some games that the, that the world changes a little bit, but it just puts you in a different world, you know, like... Yeah, but not enough for me. It the puts best, you in a different look, map. The best... The best MMORPG ever, and I'm going to get a lot of hate for this from fans, is not WoW, is Star Wars Old Republic. I agree. And here's why. And this is why I say that. So, like any MMORPG, you pick your character, you pick your race, and then you pick your class, right? Star Wars versus WoW, WoW has an overarching storyline that you, there's books for that you got to read and shit, but... Really, there's no storyline. Whereas Star Wars, every class has its own storyline, and they're all good, especially the Sith. Well, look at WoW. Look at gameplay with WoW. I agree with you with the Sith, the Sith comment, by the way. Uh, but look at WoW in general, okay? Let's look at WoW in general. WoW, World of Warcraft, people play it. The, you know, the first one came out. People played it, got bored of it, stopped. What did Blizzard do? Poof! Expansion. Okay, people played with it, played it, got bored of it stopped a few years later what did blizzard do again poof another expansion so blizzard blizzard's actually turning into a crack dealer if you think about it um you know once once these people are done with that crack they put out a new type of crack and then and then and then they get tired of that so what do they do like 10 years later poof you know now you got to fight so-and-so's grandfather that turned evil because of uh cockering i don't know but yeah it's 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 all the it's just the same shit. They're just adding more story and adding more whatever and, and more playable characters and that's good. It's a good it's a good concept, but I mean you gotta be dumb not to see what they're doing. Well not only that, but like you said, I don't like I don't like what like any game that I have to pay monthly. Mm-hmm. Like are you kidding me? WoW has been out actually that's actually a good actually point. Let's see. Yeah, Hold when on. did I'm WoW gonna come out? I'm I'm gonna do some quick I'm gonna do some quick nerd math here. Ready for this? Mm-hmm. Okay, so WoW's release date was November 23rd, 2004. Okay. So it's been out for 14 years. The monthly subscription is $15 a month. So the easy math, real quick, extrapolate that. That is $180 a year for a game that's been out since 2004 plus the prices of each expansion you have to buy the expansion let's just say that each expansion was thirty dollars there have been wow first game uh Burn crusades the lich king uh cataclysm pandora 
and I think there's another one. I think there might be six. I might I be. There, I, might I know be, there's one coming out. I think. And there's a new one coming out. But let's just go with the six. I, and there might be more. There might be less. But thirty dollars a piece there. That's that's one hundred eighty dollars. So plus your one hundred eighty dollars a year. Uh, so for fourteen years is gonna be two thousand five hundred and twenty dollars. Yep. Yep. Two thousand five hundred and twenty dollars is what you've averagely spent. That's just for the monthly fee. Then you add on the extra $120, $180, which is going to be $2,700 that you have spent on WoW. Just on WoW. Just on WoW. Now, $2,800. Are you? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a shitty car. Like. That's a shitty car. <laughs> the, well, if you think about it, I mean, if you played WoW that long, that's great. Good for you. If if you love that game, if you love these types of games, that's great. I again, I'm the type of person that I I, I call me old fashioned. I want to pay I pay for the game once. I'm done. I one and done. You know, I, yep. there's no reason to keep paying for it. I should be able to play yep. it. It's my it is my property at that point. I shouldn't have to pay to play it online, or at least pay to play it. You know, pay to play it at all because with with WoW when you bought it. If you didn't pay to play online, you didn't play it. Uh, it even even your favorite game, the uh, the Old Republic, started out as a pay to play game. Now this is where a lot of the I in my opinion a lot of the different MMORPGs downfall. This is where they fucked up. A lot of them saw WoW doing so good, so they did the same thing. They did the you know almost the exact same thing. Pay us a month fee blah 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 whether the game was good or not and a lot of these games weren't even finished they were just putting out they were just putting out like demos of these games and saying they were full games and, and then adding you know updating them because they're online games they can do that um as they went uh, uh star trek online is a is a very big big example of of a game that matured well when but when it first came out it was almost unplayable um but my point being is that as the game, as the time went by, these games, these game developers have seen that, well, MMORPGs aren't as, aren't as, aren't doing as well as we thought. So what they do is they would make it free to play, but you can, you can pay for the extra shit. Hold on. I got something for you. You're, this is going to blow your mind. You ready for this? Okay, yeah, do it. I just looked something up because I was curious. Okay. At WoW's highest, Blizzard reports in 2010, they had 12 million subscribers. Let me say that one more time for you guys, so the little kitties at home that weren't listening. At their highest point in 2010, they had 12 million subscribers, which means 12 million paid players. If for one month, 12 million people paid $15, 15 times 12 million, are you fucking give kidding us the, me give us the math math man tell me what's 15 times 12 million it's gonna be 180 million let me let me just yeah 180 that. million dollars 180 million i believe so i'm doing this off my head guys so 180 million dollars for one month one month are you <laughs> kidding me <laughs> You can't tell me the budget of these, these programmers needs 180 million dollars. It's it's a lot of money. I mean, what do you think? What do you think made? Uh, what do you think made the MMORPG a thing? What do you think made well, people want to want to buy? What what made this popular? Well, I mean, I think I think that's what one of the things I, I me me and my me and my me and my me and my girlfriend were talking about this, and she's a she's a, she's still a huge dedicated WoW player. She's a huge WoW player. And one of the things I always say, one of the downfalls of games like Mass Effect or uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is that when you perfect the game, when you get the best armor and the best gear and the best storyline, when you play by yourself, nobody sees it. With MMO, when you get a badass piece of gear and you're walking around or you got that, you got that one legendary mount that nobody else has, in an MMO, people get to see it. There's a little bit of, like... Fame. I'm better than you are. Yeah, a little bit of that. A little bit, a little bit of that. And we nerds love that. We we, we learn. We nerds love a little bit of. Well, especially what, when you work hard for it, you know. Not yeah, when you use little, mommy's little credit card. Recognition. A little bit of recognition for your hard work is never a bad thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that just just hearing one comment of "Oh my God, where's that mount?" made your 
your all those raids, all those all those all those quests, totally worth it because now you get to have something that nobody else has. Oh, I well, got what something about to know. what about the idea of playing with other people? What about the idea of playing? You know, you, me, you'll say three other people getting together, getting on there and going on a raid and, and, and trying to get kill this boss. And, and I think that made it fun too, right? And, that, and that's the thing is, is not many games can handle... Back in the day, man, there are so many great nerd stories that make my heart just so light. It's ridiculous. Like, I love hearing people who found, like, I never had a friend in the world. I live in a small town. I downloaded WoW, and suddenly I had 50, 60 friends to the point where these guys would travel. Like, there was one dude, one of my favorite stories. This is it's still, it's still online somewhere. I can't remember. And these guys played WoW for five years together, two dudes, mm -hmm. and never met each other. And the guy said that he was getting married and wanted his WoW buddy to be his best man at his wedding. They flew out and spent the entire weekend together, and it was the first time they met. Like, That's they met badass. their best... And that's 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 cool, man. Like linking people together, like the, or finding the, like, love off of WoW. You know, people getting married. Yeah, people, people getting like married that. off WoW, finding girlfriends, finding friends, just finding friends, man. There's a great meme, and I'll, and I'll never forget this. It's where like the meme is kind of sad, but kind of great. It's where a guy is like crying and depressed, and like leaning over his computer, and he's and he's like he's touching his computer screen, and then it's like a thousand people touching the computer screen. And it oh, says, I've like, seen that. As a gamer, you're never alone. And that is, I think, what the appeal is to MMORPGs, is, is you're right. When you play these big, massive multiplayer online games, you're, you, you are never alone. Unless you're me, yeah. who likes to play alone on those games. Unless you're like me, too, who likes to play a single-player game. That's the problem that I, that's, I can't get into And these, that's another you know? thing. Like the, the, the thing with MMORPGs, we're talking about the bad things, of course. The, the, the good, that, that good thing can also be a bad thing. The players can also make the experience bad. You've got yes. people out there that are grief, that they call them griefers or, or trolls or whatnot, that just go out and make shit bad for you, make, make the game experience just not fun. And then, of course, you've got people who just, you know, uh, in certain instances, just, just spam the chat, you know? Uh, you know, looking for guild, looking for group, looking for this, looking for that. And you got those fucking hornball fucking 40-year-old... They're 30 year old, whatever age have you, hornball people who are still live in the 90s when the internet was a thing, still trying to have cyber sex online. You know, like, hey, is there any girls out there? Just play the fucking game. Yeah. Yeah, just play the game, man. If you want, but dude, like, if you want, if you want to, if you want to get on a game to get to have sex, get World of Warcraft. I still want to get that game. <laughs> but, but no, so it's, it's one of those things where I think that the community is huge. Like, and like, look, MMOR, MMORPGs don't, they have a, a, they have, they can have a toxic community, but it's MOBAs that have the toxic community. MOBAs well, have a... I think that's because most of the people from the MMORPGs went to MOBAs. I, I think so. And, and that's the thing. But here's the thing, like, it, like I said, I, it, I'm not hating on them for the camaraderie, the community. These are great things. Also, I think that it was just, it was, look, look, it was so big. Wow, it was so big that even South Park did an episode about it. Yeah, well, they did, yeah, they did an episode of, you know, MMORPGs got so big that I think every company just jumped on it. I think that's what kind of killed it, too. I think that at one point, you just seen a new MMORPG come out every five seconds. You yeah, know? there's so many that you can't even, and the ones that are, the ones that are great last, now, for me personally, like I said, I didn't play WoW. I did, however, play Star Wars Online like people play WoW. I fucking loved that game. I was part of the guild. I was part of, you know, I was I was just, I was that guy that you came to to ask how how to build your, your, your class and how to build your specs. I had so many different characters. I main a Sith Inquisitor with my double-bladed lightsaber, and then I, and I, and, uh, and then my secondary character, who was just great, he was, he was a, he's a Cathar, so he's a cat people, for those of you who don't know Star Wars. He was a cat person, huge, six feet tall, muscly, and his name was Fluffles McBoom. And I just love the idea that somewhere in the Star Wars galaxy, it was like we're gonna send our our greatest a uh, uh, death, uh, our greatest Sith. He's our juggernaut. He's gonna wipe out the entire planet. Who who, who are you sending? We're sending Fluffles. Dun 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I just like, like I, I, and I come up with my own backstory. It's like Fluffles became a Sith because he got picked on so much for being called Fluffles. Fluffles. Why are you so angry? My parents named me Fluffles. <laughs> I'm not cute! And yet he's the cutest little cat bar ever. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. So I mean there's so I like but again I like I liked I liked Star Wars Online because of the storylines. The Sith Inquisitor storyline and the Sith Juggernaut storyline are the best one though, believe it or not, in my opinion, out of all eight storylines, the best one is the Sith um in, uh is the Sith um uh, agent. Mm-hmm. You really are James Bond. You play a double agent at one point. You play a triple agent at one point. It's fucking insane. It's unreal. The we the web of lies and and deceit and, and and what you're dealing with. It's so so good. And the companions are so good. Um, I played lineage. That's why I you know that was okay. That was all right. It was uh, a little bit too. Um, Magical. My the big taste. one I remember was EverQuest. Do you remember EverQuest? I do remember EverQuest. I do remember, remember that one. Remember, remember EverQuest? Remember EverQuest? Remember what of Warcraft? I remember. Remember Guild Wars? I remember. <laughs> it, there, there's a lot of good games, and there's a lot of not so good games. Like I said, some of them had to kind of mature. Star Trek Online actually turned into a really good game. Yeah, it really did. It really did. It started um, out really, like, the star maps were so confusing that you didn't know where the fuck you were when it started out. the hell was that? What? Something yellow went by your shoulder. That? And that? It's my back scratcher. Butt scratcher! My butt scratcher! But, uh, butt scratcher. Butt scratcher. Butt scratcher. But, uh, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good games. So, let's talk more about, about the negative. Like, what's... I mean, obviously, it's the people. It's in some of these games, it's it's the drops because, of course, you're playing with more people, so the drop rate has to be much higher. The grind. The grind. The grind. It, Mabinogi. If you ever get Mabinogi, Mabinogi is bad about grinding. You got like I literally, I'm like literally level like three thousand something, and I'm still fucking weak just because that's how the game is. So this is the negative for WoW. Because I, I did play WoW. So I did, I, I did, I did play WoW. I never and, played and WoW. I, I played WoW it, before, the set, before the first expansion. So level 60 was the cap, right? Mm-hmm. Back in the old days. Old school. I'm old school. Mm. You know? Yeah. So uh, I played back in the old days. And when I first started playing, all my friends were just WoW crackheads. Like, they loved it, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, bro. You get to level 60, the game is amazing. You don't want it until we get to fucking level 60! <laughs> and back in the day, you didn't get your mount early. You had to earn that fucking mount. So you walked every fucking where. I walked that entire fucking map. Uh, anyways, so you... <laughs> but no... So I finally dinged to level 60, right? Ding! And I even put it like, ding, level 60, and I got like, uh, like just a line of congratulations, because it was a big deal when you hit level 60. It used to be a huge deal when you got to level 60. So I got to level 60, and I was like, all right, now the game begins, and now the game's getting fun. Guess what? Spoiler alert, it didn't get fun. It got more grindy. Now I'm doing raids, and this is what you just said. Now I've got to, okay, now to get one chest piece, I got to do one quest, a raid with 20 people, and if the drop happens, I've got to if. roll dice against 20 other people to get that piece of gear. And if I don't get that piece of gear, I gotta do this quest again? No. 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 Fuck that. I'm done. I'm out. Flip keyboard. Done. So mad. Well, that's, so where, mad. that's where raids and shit like that come in as a bad thing, you know? It's fun when you do it as a, with a bunch of friends and you're having fun, but like when it's when it becomes work, you know I got to get this last piece of of, of of I don't know metal or item or what have you. When it becomes work, it's just no fun. And then when you did it like for the fifth thousandth time in a row, there's no reason to fucking do it because you're just tired. No joke. I used to have a buddy of mine who was unavailable Thursday nights because. That was his raid night with his with his guild. Like he wouldn't do anything. He had to like he got his days off work 
He canceled all of his plans. Like, if it was Thursday night, you were not hanging out with this dude. Like, unless you played WoW. And then you were hanging out with him online. Like, it's Thursday night, it's my WoW night. <laughs> right. And that, so that's the grind. So, uh, so that's the grind and the gear looting it was, was a big problem for me. The other big problem, like you said, because I agree with you, I don't like... Look, it's only... Look, it used to be... And who knows how much it was before, but now it's only $15 a month. Well, here's the thing. I don't want to pay every fucking month for a video game. I don't. I, I pay don't. enough monthly as an adult. Why should like, I pay for a game that I bought already? You know, you that was the beauty of video games. Is you buy it once, you play it, you have fun, you go on from there. Yeah, yeah, I understand that the MMO... And there's, there's always the other side of the spectrum where people are going to be like, Well, they got to keep up with the fucking servers. Well, they got to keep doing this. they got to have money so they can upgrade the system. And I understand that. I do. But you know what? I don't play well, it. For $180 million? they got to pay the people who worked on the game. They got to pay... $180 million in one month? they got to keep the servers going. No. they got to they got to they got to put the drugs in their system. If they don't have the money, they can't put the drugs in their system, man. <laughs> no, what it was was Blizzard's executive needed another fucking mansion in Lamborghini. That's what it was. Golden fucking cockering. Yeah, exactly. I'm not paying for your golden cockering, asshole. He needs another golden cockering. If he doesn't have his golden cockering, he can't come. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, no. Like, I'm not paying for your golden fucking cockering, asshole. Oh, no, and that's God. the thing is, like... So that's the other thing is I don't I don't like the pay to play I don't and to be honest, back in the old days and I might get a lot of hate for this especially in the WoW, Star Wars wasn't as bad, WoW was, um, the community was very elitist. Oh yeah. God forbid you didn't play your character and build your character exactly the way people thought you should. You, you were never be invited to anything. You were. And don't get me wrong. And don't get me wrong, there's a bit of intelligence. Like, look, I'm an intelligent guy, I like intelligent games. There is a bit of like, look, if you're a DPS, you, you, you don't tank. If you're a tank, you don't try to heal people. If you're a mage you, you, and you're a healer, you don't try to fucking do damage. I get that. I get the class system. I get it. I really, really do. But I played one game, and I'll never forget this, because I, and I, it's when I, and I, it wasn't that I experienced the toxicness. I was playing by myself. I got to level 60. My buddy invited me to play with his, with his guild. So it was 20 of us, and I got a wall of text being like, Gab is fucking playing a rogue like it's supposed to be played! And I was like, yeah. Like, I built my character so that I go invisible, I go behind him, and all my damage done from backstabbing and, 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 in, and, and being behind. I'm not supposed to take it. The tank's supposed to go in, aggro all the thing, I pop invisible, I go around him, and then I do a bunch of damage with my double blades. Mm -hmm. Like, I know how to play a rogue. I get that. But it's like, but what I experienced in that raid, in that one raid, there was a there was a uh, a tank who wasn't who was trying to basically do what I was doing and trying to get more damage per second or whatever, you know, more DPS and stuff. And they were just shitting on him all day. Like, and eventually he's just like, well, fuck this. Like he rage quit, right? He's like, fuck this, I'm out, and fucking quit. And it's like, dude, you guys made this guy quit. I get it. He was being a fucktard, but at the same time, like. Like, that's not cool, bro. But that's the thing is, I don't like the elitism of it, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, look at this scrub. He's level 60 and he's only but got this gear. That's another problem with, with MMORPGs is, is there's a lot of elitists and a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just, and I just, and I just, and I just get tired of, I just get tired of the elitist. Like, oh, like, look at his, his armor is only a 950. What a fucking, the community can be very nice. Yeah, it's not very just, supportive. it's not just toxic and horrible. No, no, not at all. No, I don't want to shit on, on MMOs, you know. Like, they can be very fun, and, and, and they can be great. But, but the, negative, the last negative that I have, and this, is, and this, is, um, this goes with, with all games. All, they're all guilty of this. When the next new crack comes out, it inevitably fucks up what you've fallen in love with. Yeah. You know? Like, WoW was a big one where, I don't know, I don't know what game it was because I stopped playing a long time ago, but I heard, like, the map got completely changed. Yeah. You know? in one of the updates. I think it was Cataclysm. I think Cataclysm, like, ruined the world or whatever, and a lot of people are like, I wish, I, 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 I miss the old maps, this, that, and the other, and it's like, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like a game that's always changing, and every update I gotta learn all this new shit. Well, it, and, should, give you, that, it should give you the option to go from one map to the other. And, and, and though it's not an MMO, though it's not an MMO, I'm gonna bring up a game that we all hate on this podcast, 
and this is a big thing, this is my last big negative point, is that you work and 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 work. I'm in a loop. Okay, so you work for so long to get this gear. The new update comes out, and now your gear is nerfed. Big time nerfed. And I know what game you're going to talk about now. Destiny is huge on that. You know, I work for hours to get the greatest gun all of all time. New expansion comes out. Oh, by the way, your gun is now went from an orange, legendary, awesome, badass gun to a green gun. What? What? Fuck you, like, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying don't nerf the old gear. I'm not saying no, don't bring in new gear. But you don't need to nerf the gear that it took me sometimes months to get to now. It's just a piece of trash. Fuck you, Bungie. Fuck you, Bungie. But why was why was a big one with that too? My girlfriend was just telling me about that. My girlfriend was just telling me how a lot of the gear that happens a lot of times the gears fucking get these epic weapons aren't epic anymore. So it's like, what's the point then? What's the point? Why play, why play this game if in uh, six months or a year everything I work for is all for naught? From this ba this horrible area that's that you know you got to be level billion to get, and then then the new expansion comes out and it's nothing. Oh oh, all of a sudden this this area where you get you work so hard to get this item isn't so big and bad anymore. Well, what what what's with the world lore? Did that area just become less bad? Is it like a Saturday morning cartoon? Did a bad new bad guy come out and made that guy look like shit? Did Lord Zed right. come out and make Rita Repulsa look like nothing? You know? <laughs> and, and then they gotta get in the, That's a good analogy, though. Thank you. No, that, and, that's, and that's my last thing that I, that, that I just can't stand. And it's hard because, like, when people ask me all the time, well, what would you do, Gambit? Like, how would you make it... How would you keep the fans interested? I fucking don't know. I'm not a game developer. I'm not a writer. I'm fucking dumber than a box of rocks. Look, I'm pretty not smart. Like, that's my thing. Like, I have... I, 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 all I know is, like... Look, when I beat a game, there's a sense of completion to it. You know, that's the thing. It's like and there's pride. I, that's you I take like, that pride away when you make the game beating the game not so big a deal. Exactly. When the game is never beatable, there's never that final orgasm. You just basically never let me come. Well, there's a diff. There's a difference between a game feeling unbeatable, like say a good example being like, okay, I finally beat World of Warcraft, and now here comes the expansion. Okay, well now I got more I can do. Well, there's a big, there's a, there's something they can do to make it to where it's not as fucking like, fuck the old system. Here's the new system, you know. The old system was shit. Here's the new system. The new system is that much worse. And by the way, you got to be twenty levels higher to get to beat it. There's a way they can do that. They can keep things the same and make things more difficult for the next part. You know, make the make the game harder. Make the monsters have more hit points. Make the monsters have a higher hit. Uh, armor class and maybe that's what they're doing but it doesn't sound like it if they're nerfing shit and that's the thing too i agree with you that's why that's why i think that diablo had it right too it's like look my gear that's epic now is not it's not nerfed it's just it's just like yeah i have to get better gear but it, but i'm still strong i can play this game right off the bat and still be strong that gear stays epic and the gear stays amazing and there's still a backstory to that gear making it really cool and, the, and now the backstory isn't being nerfed as well it's like it's exactly. like it's like um, uh, Gambit, you found the sort of I don't know unending orgasms, right? Unending orgasm. That sounds terrible. I, I don't know. I'm just making the sword name up. So you All found right. the and there's there's this huge lore behind it that like this and that you got got it from Orgasmo, the the keeper of the fucking dick. I don't know. But anyway, you got you, you got this and there's a huge backstory to it and it's supposed to be like the best sword you know that you can get in this game. It, at this point and then all of a sudden they nerf it it, it used to be like 10 10 damage is now like a two damage and they nerfed it and now the next biggest baddest baddest thing you got to work really hard to get doesn't that take away from the lore from the first weapon you got but at the end of the day i really like like i said i like the idea of mmorpgs i'm just they're just not my cup of tea they're not my cup of tea. And if you love them out there, if you guys are fans out there, we'd love to hear, like, what's your favorite MMORPG? What do you play? Like, what do you like? Why do you like them? The, I wish my girlfriend was on this podcast because she plays the fuck out of them. We could have got a much, like, much more in-depth reason why people love them. And I get why people love them. I played it. I like them. I don't love them. I like them. I like them a lot, actually. They're entertaining, Again, I just, and they're fun. But the thing about it is, is like, look, I got so many games that I like to play. That again, they're all the same, though. That's the issue, especially at I one point. I just don't want to pay fucking, I don't want to pay monthly. I just don't. I'm well, just, 
not it, cheap. And it's grindy, not and uh, th that's the big issue. Is a lot, especially back when they all started coming out after World of Warcraft, they were all the same. They were just reskinned. Right. You know? Uh, what I liked about the Old Republic is the space battles. What I liked about... The space battles in the Old Republic were fun. was fun as fuck, you know? Mabinogi reminds me a lot of Sword Art Online because you can literally learn to do anything. That's and pretty that's, dope. And that's why I like that. You can fish, you can fucking gather eggs, and, and it'll, you'll level up those things as well. And you can get better at being any of that stuff. And that, What's that's it a, on? It's a PC game. It's on Steam. Uh, I, th I think we're good on RPG, MMORPG. All right, guys, once again, we thank you for listening and watching us. Uh, is there anything you want to say, Gambit? Uh, yeah, so I'm doing, like I said, I've been, I've been streaming on our Twitch channel. I've been doing Graveyard Gaming with Gambit. Um, I, like I said, I've been, I've been consistently doing it on Tuesday nights. Uh, I, I throw it up uh, oh, whenever, I, whenever I Consistently, consistently doing it. Inconsistent, yeah, consistently, inconsistently doing it. Well, the problem is, like, my work is a bitch, man, because every time I get, like, a set schedule, they're like, oh, JK, somebody quit, so we need to, you need to work, you know, I need to work. It's like, dude, like, I'm trying to do things. Like, I got things outside of this. So just keep in mind that just watch our Twitch channel a lot. Uh, get on our Discord if you, if you guys aren't on it. I throw up on our Facebook a lot when I'm when I'm streaming. And again, the big game that I'm waiting for, and that's why I'm kind of, like, getting all the, the bugs and kinks out of my streaming ability, because when Call of Duty comes out, Woo, that's all I'm gonna be doing. Like yeah, yeah. I'm not. I don't even know if I'm gonna shower. I'm just gonna play Call of Duty. Like I might just stink. Like just god awful. Like my neighbors might call the cops because they think I'm. Well, dead keep stink. the girlfriend off you, won't it? I mean, no. She'll tell me to shower. She'll just hose me down with a fire hose. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only other big news. The only reason why I've been on the podcast, I said it on my on Twitch, um, is the same reason. Work. I work graveyards now. Um, I, I'm I'm a night worker yay i guess it's weird um so it's hard for me to get on the podcast but i'll but i'll be on i'm, I'm on today uh we got a big one coming up that we're super excited for we're not gonna say what's going on but we're super excited about this one i've been waiting for this one since like episode 20 we talked about it uh so three years i've been waiting for this i'm super excited we're coming, um, that's another thing we're coming up on three years of doing this yeah three years man Woo! that's in, a in august i think i said we're gonna that's be a lot of times. Uh, the other big one I've noticed uh, too, that I'm gonna give a shout out because I know you've been doing it on Facebook, is uh, we've been getting top listens or most popular listens on uh, on uh, Newgrounds. That's freaking awesome, guys! Thank you, thank you for listening, thank you for being there since day one. I know like, Newgrounds, you don't see this, but I'm giving you guys a thumbs up. Yeah, huge thumbs up to you guys because we've been on Newgrounds since we started. That's where we started three years ago. And I remember we we were getting like 50, 60, you know, 70 listens, and now we're At most. First. Yeah, it, it's it's nice to it's nice to know we're being listened to, and it blows my mind that people still like to hear our voices. So yeah, no, it blows my mind all the time. Like people want to listen to my dumbass th rant about stupid shit. Like it's 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 amazing. I mean, so. I was just talking about the freaking sort of unending coming or something like that orgasm. I forget what I said. Yeah. you know, fuck it, it. What the fuck? Like what what's wrong with you people? <laughs> They're, they're probably they're asking, "What's all, wrong with all you?" Us, they're, they're, they're not normal. They're better than normal. They're abnormal. We're uh, yeah, Abby normal, young <laughs> Frankenstein. So, all right, guys, uh, that's a, that's it for now. We'll see you next week on episode ninety-three. We're getting close to the end of this season, and as you guys know, after episode one hundred, we'll probably take a two, three month break so we can think and and figure stuff out to bring more stuff to you. Uh, all right, guys, once again, thanks for listening, and stay sexy. Peace!